This is Black Views, bringing you the Black News. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Greetings to FBA, my brothers and sisters. Today, I will be displaying to you how policing is is cultivated, how it how training is being done that supports um, anti-black, that supports uh, the type of um, dehumanizing and glorifying violence behavior among uh, police officers. So what I have provided today was a snippet of video to show you, and then I will come back with comments and give my opinion. Stand by. I love what the fuck I do for a living. There's nothing else I'm good at. Uh, I love violence, I love fighting, I love shooting, and I fucking love freedom. It wasn't that long ago that we were drinking out of the schools of our enemies. Like, you know, like, I'm gonna fucking murder this guy, then I'm gonna take his head, then I'm gonna cut his head in half, and then I'm gonna boil his skull, and then I'm gonna drink out of that skull. Fucking rat, right? I'm not sure the guy who's fucking recording you like, oh, I am not a citizen of the United States under fucking Act 12, 6. Shut the fuck up, right? I'm about to get pepper sprayed and fucking tased. <laughs> Windows broken out, motherfucker. We don't like treating turds, right? You're like, ah, fuck them. The ambulance can take care of them, right? And I had a problem treating, you know, gangbangers and the people that were the pieces of shit of society, right? I had a, a great mentor that told me, well, Sean, guess what? That's a live tissue lab, bro. Anytime you can come to one of these shitbags, absolutely do the best you can. Absolutely, because what if he gets hurt, right? Or she gets hurt, or he gets hurt, then I can perform that flawlessly because now I've had some reps in. Everybody get that? Everybody with me on that? In the south, it's the wild, wild, west, south, wherever. If you don't believe me, run from Georgia State Patrol. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Okay. Run from me. Somewhere along the chase becomes <laughs> neither confirm or deny there's some videos out there with me doing just that. This guy pulls into the gas station, uh, pops his hood up, gets out of his car. But yeah, in Jersey, we don't we don't pump our own uh, we don't pump our own gas. They do it. Uh, other people do it. So kind of like a, right from the beginning, I, I was a little concerned about it. Ask you a question. Uh, what's with the smoke? Smoke rubber band. See that rubber band? Yeah. What's with the smoke? Facial expressions. That's all I want. This was just a couple of rubber bands and driving to here. Look at his hand shaking. Do you have an ID on you, sir? Okay, can I see an ID? That's not an 18-year-old kid dressed like Jesus coming eastbound out of Trenton. It's a 75-year-old black man, a change in driving behavior, it came into a gas station, and I'm like, ugh, what the fuck? And you know what? Shame on me, because I look in there and I'm like, oh, got a couple of small rubber bands. And all I'm doing is asking, hey, what's up with that? Okay, thank you for watching. Once again, I want to thank uh, New Jersey Office of State Comptroller uh, providing me with that information. And uh, pretty much, you see it. This is what goes on in training. It's just like a football team. It's just like a basketball team. Some teams are trained for tenacity, and some teams are trained for finesse. It just depends on the type of players. And if you see here, this is uh, training.
propaganda that's used to uh, create aggressive officers. Okay, L listen. If you just listen to them and you just listen how they talk, like okay, you know, I spent time in the military. I spent time in the combat unit. Yes, there are some things that they will say um, in conjunction with the enemy, not um, domestic. Okay, and when I listen to um, these officers. Um, they don't talk as if they're policing um, American citizens. They're talking, uh, uh, they're basically talking as if they are policing a, um, a a verified enemy, a bona fide enemy. Okay, and the way they talk is they talk in a us versus them type of uh, mentality. Uh, you were also able to see as they were showing the video. What's the last thing they ended with? With the monkey, right? Okay. So they're visualizing, uh, telling you it was a black man, uh, seventy something year old, uh, who was changing lanes. And then they show a monkey right there. So that's to tell the audience, like, man, we do not care about these particular people. Okay. I mean, and, and just citizens, period, shouldn't be treated the way that I, the way I can hear them talking. Okay, remember, as I always say, you know, criminals are a small percentage of our community. But if you listen to the way that they teach policing, you would think that it's everyone in the community and they don't know how to differentiate. And this is the reason why uh, black people should police their own communities. It shouldn't have white officers in our community. And I, and I don't I don't even say that to be racist. I say that to be fair. You shouldn't have white officers because they don't share the same culture. They haven't grown up in the same neighborhoods and experienced the same type of hardships. So they wouldn't have any kind of understanding or inkling uh, to, you know, what would be fair treatment. And once again, you know, just like when you think about Kyle Rittenhouse, you know, what did he want to do? He wanted to be a police officer. He wanted to be an EMS. Once again, this goes right into that type of training. This training was done by private companies where basically the state uh, funds uh, employees to go to seminars, conferences that may be in Vegas or maybe in different places of the of the country. And when they have the seminar, this is the type of coaching that they get. OK, this way they get that. Yeah, brother, you know, that blue line shit. That's that's a front for white supremacy. Those those are race soldiers. OK. And and if you just listen to them, um, it goes to show you that a lot of these people, people never worked around minorities, black people, or anybody that have had hardships. So they're used to a certain type of style of what they say. Who they choose who they want to keep safe, and they choose who they want to see as aggressors. And that's what we have in this country. And if you look at those guys who were training, I mean, look at them. They're all immigrants. They are immigrants and they all sit on top of us as a people. And these are the people who are going to be the first to mistreat you. They're going to insinuate you were doing something you weren't supposed to be doing. Or they're going to come to conclusion to some type of crime that didn't happen. They're going to find a way to get your ID. And they're going to find a way so that there is a, a problem, a struggle, and try to somehow incarcerate you and then harm you. In the sake of saying that you resisted. These are the people that you have to watch out for. In fact, these guys aren't being police officers. They're, they're consultants. U.S. Army specialists. I mean, they, they weren't a pro may not have been police officers. You know, and, and, and the way they talk is just so irresponsible. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it at that. And I wanted to bring this to you today. Please leave a comment and tell me what you think about police training. But I, I seem to think that this is where it starts. A lot of this supports what departments are, are teaching. And in some cases, it supports what they're not trying to teach. And we need more accountability. More accountability. So thank you for your time. I appreciate you. Please, please like. Also subscribe. Also be one FBA all day. This is Black Views. Bringing you the black news.